Hey, Val here from Judo. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Otherwise, I'm happy to have you back. Today, I'd like to show you how you can easily build and design a tab bar for your app in Judo. As you may know, tab bars are a pretty common way to navigate through an app. That's because the design is fairly intuitive and it's within easy reach of your thumb, which makes navigation with one hand a lot more efficient. But before we dive in, don't forget to give this video a like if you find it helpful and subscribe so you don't miss out on our next videos. Now, let's dive in. When developers build an app with a tab bar in SwiftUI, they start by creating a main view that will house all of the other views inside of a tab view layer. This way users can switch between each tab and then they add a tab item modifier to each of those views so that a custom text and icon gets displayed for each one. This process is very similar in Judo as well. So we'll start by creating a main screen here. We'll head to the insert menu, click on new component, and we're gonna rename this to main so that we know that this is the view that will house all of the other views. Now with this main component selected, we're going to add the tab view container that we mentioned earlier. This way users can switch between those primary screens that you will create in a second. I'll go ahead and create three more screens here for the three tabs that I'll have at the bottom. You can create as many as you want, but note that Apple recommends that you don't create any more than five if you're building for iOS uh, and up to six for the rest of them. So I'll go ahead and click on that insert button and add a new component for each of my primary screens. I'll also rename them in the layers panel here to reflect the name that I'll have in that tab bar. And with that uh, layer selected, I'm going to add a text layer inside just so that I can differentiate each primary screen from one another. Uh, so I'll go ahead and create just a few more. I'll show you for this one. Uh, you can also, an alternative way to adding text is by hitting the T key on your keyboard. Uh, so we'll rename that as well. And I'll just quickly do the last one here. Okay, so I'm going to quickly rearrange these layers here just so that they're in the order that I want the screens to be in. Now, before we go any further, I wanted to take a quick look at that code that Judo has generated for us, just so that we can better understand the way that your app was built. So each view has its own piece of code. It starts with a struct, which is short for structure, and that's used to define a separate view within your SwiftUI app. Uh, and then inside of there, you have an empty initializer if we had created any properties or added any data sources, uh, this would all be inside of here. Then inside of our body variable, you'll find the text inside of all of your primary screens with this string inside of double quotations. Now in your main screen, you'll notice that your body uh, is currently empty. We added that tab view but nothing is inside of it yet. So let's insert those instances of each primary screen inside and then take a look at what the code generated. So let's begin by clicking on one of our primary screens, right clicking, copying, and then in the tab view layer of the main screen, we're gonna right click and paste it. Alternatively, we can use the keyboard shortcut command C and then command V to paste it inside of the tab view. Um, or you can copy directly inside of the canvas. So you can click on your screen, command C or right click, command V or right click. 
Now, if you take a look at your main screen here, you'll notice that the text that gets populated reflects the view that's on the very top. So if we reorganize these layers here, you'll notice that the text changes depending on which one is on top. Now let's go back to that code that Judo generated for us and take a look at the main screen. As you can see, now inside of that tab view, we have instances of the home, discover, and settings pages. And the nice thing is that you don't need to copy over the code from each one inside of them. Now, although we've added all of the primary screens to the main screen, nothing will appear in the tab bar until we've added a tab item modifier to every single view here. So click on one of the views in the layers panel here, and then in the inspectors panel, click on the suggested modifier tab item, and then customize the title if you'd like. So I'm going to add home uh, and I'm also going to add an icon from this list of SF symbols. Something to note is that if a, an icon has a an outline version and you select it, the icon that appears on the canvas is still going to be the filled in one as SwiftUI will automatically use the fill version every time. Now let's go ahead and add tab modifiers to the rest of our screens here. I'm just going to add a tab item. I'm going to call this one Discover and I'm going to take the magnifying glass. Perfect. So in this case, since there isn't a fill option, it will go ahead and reflect the selection that you made. And lastly, settings here, tab item, title, we will call it settings, and the icon will take a gear icon. Awesome. Now you'll notice that the icons have populated for each tab of your app but the tab bar itself is still blank. Now, once again, this is based off of the guidelines in Apple's human interface guidelines here. Uh, by default, that tab bar is translucent until you start scrolling down the page. Now, before we move forward, we can go ahead and test this on our device just to see if the tab uh, buttons in that bar are working as you would like them to. Uh, if you don't have the Judo app installed yet, now's the time. I'll add a link in the description, uh, but otherwise go ahead and share it. So I typically airdrop it to myself, but you can share it in whatever means fits best for you. As you can see here on my phone, the tab bar allows me to switch through each one of my primary screens. I hope you're seeing the same thing on your end as well. Now, before we move forward with making any adjustments to the background of your tab bar, I did want to quickly show you how you can adjust the color of your selected tab. By default, it uses this system blue color, but you can adjust that with the tint modifier. To apply this to the entire app, you're going to head over to that tab view in your layers panel. In the inspector panel, we're going to add the tint modifier and you can choose from a variety of system colors or any of the other colors here on the list or add your own custom color. Now note that you cannot change the default color of unselected tab items uh, as per Apple's design guidelines. Now that we've made a few adjustments to the canvas, let's take a peek at the code to see what has changed since. So now you'll notice that for each primary screen, you have a tab item modifier, which also includes the title that you used for the tab, as well as the name of the system image that you used. And then on top of all of this, we've added the temp modifier to ensure that any tab that you click on 
ends up getting displayed in this system orange color. While we're taking a look at things right now, we can head over to that preview control bar at the bottom of the canvas and click on this icon here to preview our app in dark and light mode. So we'll click it here and we see our app now in dark mode looks a little bit different. The tint color in our tab bar no longer reflects that color that we had selected. But if we go back to light mode here, we're back to orange. Uh, let's take a look at a few ways that you can style the background of your tab bar. Now, something to note is that the background can look different depending on the tab that's selected. So if you want your tab to look, your tab bar to look the same across all screens, you want to make sure that you're adding the same modifiers uh, with the same settings to every single one. So first, let's talk about the tab bar itself. Um, as I mentioned before, by default, the background is blank. It's hidden until you start scrolling. But you can override that behavior uh, with the toolbar background visibility modifier. So you can either select one of the views here, or you can click on the shift key and select all of the screens at once. Then in the inspector panel, click on toolbar background visibility modifier. Uh, so by default, it's automatic, which means that it's hidden. If you would like it to be visible, you click on that. And make sure that you have tab bar here selected and you can either unselect or keep it the navigation bar selected depending on the design of your app. Now by default, the tab bar uses a translucent material that has a blur effect for the background, but you can replace it with a solid color using the toolbar background color modifier. So in the layers panel, we still have all, all three of our primary screens selected here. And in the inspector panel, we'll click on toolbar background color and here the default is black, but once again, you can choose from a variety of system colors or any of the other colors in the list. Once again, make sure the tab bar is selected here and make the adjustment if needed for the navigation bar. The last adjustment that you can make to your tab bar is setting its color scheme. As we noticed earlier, the tab bar color automatically adapts to a user's display settings, but you can override that behavior by adding the toolbar color scheme modifier. So if we select light here, make sure tab bar is selected, regardless of whether the app is in or the user's phone is in light or dark mode, the tab bar will always be shown in the light mode. However, as you notice in my case, the default colors of the deselected tab items clashes with the green background that I've selected. So I'm going to adjust my color scheme to dark. That way it looks good in dark mode and in light mode um, because of the adjustment to the tab item colors. Now that we've finished building the skeleton, of our app with a tab bar, let's take a final look at the code that Judo has generated for us. So if we take a look at our primary screens, we'll notice that each one now has three new modifiers. These modifiers have come after the tab item modifier because they've been used to customize the appearance of the tab bar. Now, every modifier here begins with a period following the name of the modifier. And then uh, inside of the parentheses, we'll see exactly what we had selected inside of the Judo canvas. So for the toolbar background, we set it to be visible. And we also set it to be for the navigation bar as well as for the tab bar. And you'll notice that everything else that we selected in the Judo canvas is reflected in the code generated here. Now, all we have left is to preview our design on different screens and in different orientations, just to make sure that it looks good um, regardless of 
how the user is using your app. So we have three different screen sizes to look through here. And you can also change the orientation by clicking on that icon. Notice that when you have your device rotated, the tab bar automatically moves to a horizontal layout. Something to note though, is that on the iPad, the um, tab bar always remains in a horizontal layout regardless of the orientation. Now, don't forget to send your design over to your device just so that you can preview it in the Judo app. Uh, but otherwise, that's it for this video on how to build an app with a tab bar. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions though, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below uh, or feel free to join our community. We're very active on there and would be more than happy to answer your questions uh, over there as well. I'll also add a uh, link to this file that we worked on today just so that you can play around with it in real time. And as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.